Hey YouTube. Well, it's Thursday morning and uh, I want to get that tree down so I can get the garage floor formed up and be able to pour that <coughs> soon. So anyway, my thoughts on this thing are, and I'll just tell you what I'm thinking as I'm going. Now, I could probably drop it over that direction, but I don't like that idea because I've got some telephone poles over there and I don't want this tree to fall and break. I want it to fall kind of softly. So uh, I don't want to go that way. <clears throat> so anyway, I figure that the top of that tree is going to some, come somewhere near this uh, first uh, telephone pole here that I have the logs on. So it should be, that's where the end of it ought to be. Now there's some wires up here, but they're over this way about 15 or 20 feet. So I don't think I have to worry about them, although it's something, you know, that's in the uh, playbook here. But there is a branch. You can't really see it here in the camera. It's not the first one. It's up in here somewhere that's sticking out here that I think may hit this roof. But if it only hits it, you know, with the edges of the branches, it's not going to really hurt anything. I mean, if it, you know, marks it up a little bit, that's one thing, but I don't think it's going to damage it really bad. So <clears throat> I'm going to try and drop that tree about right here because the highest branch up there is going to miss on the, on the right side. The highest branch up there is going to miss this building. Okay, so if I drop that tree right like right in this line right here, not not too far over there, but right about here, I think that that would be the best way to go. Now, I talked to a bunch of people. Actually, I was just telling them that I'm going to be cutting this tree down. That's why I was moving this wood over here. But um you know, I had one neighbor tell me about how he always cuts trees with a rope, never had a problem, which I've seen him cutting trees and stuff, and, you know, it works for him. But when you tie a rope on a tree and you go to pull it, unless you have some kind of tension on it somehow, once a tree moves six inches, that rope's no good to you. Especially, you know, unless you have, like I say, some sort of tension on it. I don't have anything here to do that with. I don't even have a rope that long that would be, you know, long enough to hang on to that tree. And by rights, if you want to really get it directed with the tree, you'd want to put it up high somewhere, the rope, not down low. Well, you know, I mean, you can tell by the garage roof there. The garage roof is about uh, probably 14 feet off the ground to the peak. So I'd have to get up there a good 25 feet or so, and I don't even have a ladder for that at this point, so I'm not going to worry about that. I don't care what it does to these branches because I'm planning on cutting these trees down here because I want to be able to get at the sawmill a little better. So what I'm going to do is what I've done a lot, and I'm going to pull the backhoe over there in the front of the tree, and I'm going to put the backhoe in such a way that the backhoe bucket can push against the tree just to get it to start to fall when I cut the back cut in it. So that's how I'm going to do this. And I'll try and keep the video, the camera in a place where you'll be able to see what's going on here.
How you doing, Mr. Pentel Data? How you doing? I'm going to predict. By where you were there? Yeah, I, I think I passed where I was at. I, everything's grown up, sir, and I don't know where nothing's at. Uh, like I said, I was told my truck was still up there, so I went up to go get my old Scottsdale back.
Well guys, just so you know, nothing was hurt at all. The roof didn't catch this, and the roof over there didn't catch it. So, phew, all I gotta do now is cut the branches off. Looks like it was, I missed, judged this a little bit. I thought it was gonna reach that, so I missed that by about three feet. But, if you see where I dropped that tree, the center of the tree, I know you can't see that, but the center of the tree is right here. And I needed it to be a little further over from the shed so it wouldn't hit the roof. So, thank you, Lord. Another job so far well done. I gotta cut them branches off of there now. When you're cutting the branches off of a tree, the best thing to do is to start at the bottom of the tree. Now I started up here because this is where I was and I didn't feel like walking back down there. But it's nice when you have a helper because a helper can grab the branches, pull them away from the tree or stack them somewhere, whatever you want to do. I'm going to chip this stuff right away. But I'm just saying, you know, if you have somebody to help you, they can pull the branches out from under the tree and it makes life a whole lot easier as far as you know for the guy doing the song you can keep cutting and get all the branches off the entire tree so I'm going to do a little at a time here and uh, go from there <sighs> Phew. it's getting hot out so uh, almost 80 already I got the chipper out and it's working good so you don't have to really worry about that. I'll just show you that for a little bit. You can see how far it's throwing the stuff. It's throwing it pretty good over there.
short branches off, but you get the idea. No sense in watching that whole video, but that's what I'm going to be doing today. Have a good one, guys. I'll get back to you when I get to something interesting. I'm getting there, but it's slow for an old guy. But we'll get there. Okay, so I got all the branches cut off. I gotta nip a couple of the small pieces there. It's looking like a pretty good log, um, nice and straight. I'm gonna have to measure it and try and figure out where I want to buck it. So we're getting there, slow but sure. Okay guys, so we're gonna start to buck this uh, tree up. Cut it up into pieces that we can put on the sawmill. Now, if you looked at the end here, you'll see it has a little bit of a hook in it. So, rather than try and cut big long boards out of that first end, and let me just say this to you. If I knew what lengths I needed, and I don't because I'm, I don't, I have everything I need for the garage pretty much, I would cut these in whatever lengths I needed, this tree. But I don't need anything in particular. So I can cut some nice 8 footers, I can cut 12s, I can cut whatever I want. But, depending upon how nice it is, I'd rather cut some 8 foot boards out of it. Maybe a couple longer ones, but not, not too much longer. I mean, uh, in framing lumber, and I'm talking about, you know, for construction, you only use one by, for, you know, like sometimes face boards trim or corners, depending on the siding you're putting up. Um, so the so uh, N1 by can be like window sills, extension jams, things like that. But I'm not. I don't have any of that in mind. So just cutting one by is uh, the better value as far as money goes for how much it's worth. So anyway, you can see where the tape ends right there, right here under my finger. That's 12 foot, and I think that that's too big. To cut there so I'm going to drop that back to 8 foot so then if you look at the tree then from where that 8 foot would be probably all the way up to about right here where I'm at right in front of me it's pretty much the same size now I'm not saying it's exactly the same maybe maybe right there but it is it's about the same size you know it's not tapering too hard now from there up you can see it tapers pretty hard um, you know, up at this, right in here, it starts to taper. The very end there is too small. I probably won't use that for anything. I'm talking about the last four feet. So I want to measure and do the cutting that I'm going to need here to be able to get the nicest board. So for right now, at that end, because there's a little bit of a bend in that tree, I'm going to cut that at eight foot. So an eight foot section will give me some nice 2x4s or anything I want to cut out of there, but we'll check and see what it is. Now here's the other thing, if you need big, big lumber, you know, like 2x12s or whatever, you got to cut them from the big end of the tree, so I would want to cut them from that end, but like, like I say, I'm really not in need of anything like that. Now maybe 1x12, if I could get 1x12 out of this thing somewhere, that might not be bad, but I'm just going to go ahead and cut them the lengths that I feel that I would need to be able to do what I want to do with it. And I can put, probably a lot of this can go into the kiln, because I uh, what I have stacked up over there isn't enough to fill the kiln once I empty it. But I do have pretty much to cut yet, and I would probably be able to fill the kiln once I'm done cutting without any of this. And I could just dry this outside down to 19% too, that wouldn't hurt anything. So it's a matter of you do what you want to do or you do what you need. So for right now, I'm going to cut that bottom end there off at 8 foot because I don't need anything longer in pine at the moment. Okay? So let me get that cut and then I'll get back to you. Okay, guys. So if you look there, you can see basically where I cut that right here and here. So those are two eight foot three logs, and I'm considering cutting this next one 
um, right we see that little stick right here on top of the log that's 12 foot there now that looks like it's a pretty good log the only thing is it looks a little crooked to me right there so um, I'm not certain if I should cut that 12 foot there or cut it at 8 and then another 12 after the 8 that might even be better but you can see that this knot here like where this branch is sticking up right here I, I'm not sure if my fingers pointing at it um, th that's where it's going to have to be cut in order to change to the next lower thing because there's not a whole lot of you know bulk left there so um, just trying to think about this 12 footer I don't know if I should cut that 12 foot or not you know I really don't need 12 footers and I would probably use 8 footers sooner hmm Well, I got to do a little bit of thinking about that, but you can see where I cut the two down there anyway, so that's ready to get moved out of there then. <clears throat> like I say, this one here seems to have a little bit of a bend in it right here. It seems like it has a little bend. And right from here. So if I cut it off at eight foot again, you know, the shorter the log is, the less the bend bothers it and then I might be able to get a 12 out of the other part here let me let me check this with some with a tape measure uh, okay guys so I decided to cut them into eight footers all of them you can see that end there I couldn't do nothing too much with the end so I've got one two three four five logs and um, they're actually pretty nice looking up to this last one but I just think that that was the best way to go with that tree I mean it wasn't a really old tree really too big I think that tree was about 12 maybe 10 inches in diameter when I first moved here and it grew pretty good it grew nice but uh, I don't know how old it is exactly but I know the last 15 years it grew pretty steadily so and now it's time for it to come down so anyway that's where I'm at um, and I'll be able to dig the footer over there once I get the stump out but I should have some really nice white pine out of this as well and that's what I'm pretty much looking for so I need to move these logs yet so Sally can get by there to get to the chickens